In the last video, we looked at this special case of a cash flow diagram that entitles us to a constant stream of payments for perpetuity, which means we have to understand what the, an infinite number of these regular payments at regular compounding intervals is going to be worth in present value terms. And we derived an expression from our exponential discount rate formula that shows P equals A over R. This is so simple that it almost seems too good to be true. So the question is, can we apply a common sense test that would arrive at the same conclusion, or at least verify that this makes some sort of sense? Here, we're considering discounting from the future to the present, but you know that the equivalent of that is going from the present to the future. So let's consider this equivalent, this sort of reverse problem. What would happen if we put a certain amount of money in the bank, P? If we did that at time zero, then the amount of money that we have here, P, would grow over time. We know that that would grow like this because compounding interest adds some balance during the first compounding period and during the second compounding period we not only get to collect interest on our original P but we get to collect interest on the interest and so the amount of interest as long as we leave the interest in the account the amount of interest keeps growing over time exponentially the balance grows at this e to the RT rate which is just the reciprocal of e to the negative rt. So let's change the conditions here. We know how a, a savings account balance can grow exponentially over time, but what if we remove the interest? So in this first period, where instead of allowing this interest to sit in the account and grow, we're going to take that out and we're going to spend it. And that means our account stays down here. We'll collect the same amount of interest, we're no longer on this path because we took this interest out, collect the same amount of interest in the next compounding period, and we're going to remove that, and we're going to keep removing the interest every time. The question is, how much interest could we expect to collect on our balance P, given that the bank is paying us? And the answer is, if P here is the balance, the interest that we could collect is R. Now you can see how this is the exact same result as we found from integrating the discount factor function. It's just slightly rearranged. If we multiply both sides of this equation by R and we put A and we sort of reverse the sides, we get exactly this equation. So we can see that if we have a bank balance, how long are we expecting the bank to pay us interest? And the answer is for perpetuity. As long as the bank is solvent, we're expecting them to pay us interest on our deposit. And if that, hypothetically, interest can be collected for perpetuity, then it does make sense that an infinite stream of payments, as long as these are constant payments going into the future, is worth a finite amount of money today. The seemingly counterintuitive equivalence allows us to use a simple formula to make sort of some back-of-the-envelope approximations. It doesn't necessarily have to be just a perpetual bond. You know that over very long time horizons, the discount rate gets very small. So there might be long-term projects, uh, building a dam, uh, building uh, very long-lasting infrastructure where we're expecting the life of the structure to be hundreds of years. We can approximate the present value of any future benefits from the project, uh, irrigation water sold or electricity sold, by using this sort of simplistic formula rather than using something much more complex. This back of the envelope calculation can be very powerful for understanding in a quick way where the present value of a long-term project might stand. Now in the next video, I'll show you some of the fallacies of the exponential decay discount factor formula.